This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So now we're going to look at performance. Performance, what is it? Performance measurement and performance management. So performance can be defined as uh, here, as a task or operation seen in terms of how successfully it is performed. Uh, and as soon as we have this idea of how successfully it is performed uh, there, then, then there, there is an implication that, of course, that there must be some sort of judgment, some sort of measurement, really, uh, before we can talk about performance. Uh, and what we need to do is to find ways of measuring performance. And indeed, even before that, we, we need to find out, well, what is performance? You know, what are, what are the tasks and operations uh, or, or even behaviours uh, that are worthwhile to measure, that are actually contributing to good performance? How are we going to measure them? And then having measured them, the, the, the objective really is to manage them. Uh, if performance is poor, we have to try and uh, do something about it to, to elevate the uh, the, the level of performance is something which is going to be acceptable to hitting a target normally. The first thing we can uh, uh, think about is uh, where do we uh, get clues about uh, what aspects of performance or, or, or really what, what makes up performance that we want to be concerned with. And the first place we can look at is a mission statement. Uh, so, so the mission statement tells us the, uh, the 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 kind of objectives, the kind of purpose of a business, uh, and very often within a mission statement, you will have uh, words used which are saying what the business is for, and therefore where it should be be performing. So, so if you uh, have an mission statement saying our uh, objective is to be a, a car company uh, producing cars of excellent quality. Then, then you know we have quality mentioned in that mission statement, uh, and if that's what you're setting yourself up to be—a high quality car producer. Then you ought to be thinking, I need to measure uh, quality. That's an important aspect of performance. That's relevant to our feeling of performance. If you say we also need to be innovative, then you have to measure innovation. If you're saying we need to be profitable, uh, then we need to measure that. If you we say we're, we're going to offer a good service to our customers and that's in your mission statement, then, then you have to measure that. You have to say that's part of our promise to our shareholders and our stakeholders uh, about our uh, performance. Stakeholder analysis. We'll be looking to see uh, what our stakeholders are interested in. Uh, our shareholders may be interested in dividends and share price, and if so, then we ought to be measuring that. Uh, our customers may be interested in quality and cost per unit, and if so, then we ought to be measuring that as well. So stakeholder analysis uh, can give us, again, aspects of performance. What do they require from us? Uh, what do they want from us? And, and certainly the key stakeholders, their requirements, uh, has to be... We have to make sure we get them. We have to think of those in terms of performance. Generic strategies. If we say we're a cost leader, then it's important that we measure our costs and make sure that indeed the costs are as low as they can possibly and ideally lower than anybody else. If our generic strategy is one of differentiation, uh, we have to launch new products and new style and so on. If we're saying our products are better because they're styled better, we ought to try and measure in some way. It may not be easy. Uh, but how do we know that the style is better or the products are sufficiently innovative if we don't try to measure it? The value chain. Remember the value chain uh, is kind of what makes us tick, really. Uh, what is it that our customers uh, uh, come to us for and give us good money that allow us to make profit? What is it that we do? Is it that we uh, do something very reliably? Is it that we take risk away from them? Uh, is it that we give them a share of our economies of scale and so on. Uh, we need to measure all sorts of stuff in the value chain. If we're going to be spending money training people, then we ought to know how much that speeds them up in, in the operations. We need to know the, the linkages. We need to measure uh, the, 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 the performance of people after and before the training. Boston Consulting Group Grid. 
Uh, maybe what we need to do is we want to uh, change an item from being the problem child, the question uh, mark, up to being the star product. What we'll be measuring there is not profit. What we're measuring there, because this is not a profitable area of the business yet until we get to the cost cow, what we'll be wanting to measure is increase in market share. That's the immediate imperative that we have to get to. When we get up to the cost cow bit, uh, we're not. This is where we want to reap the benefits. If you remember, we want to get the positive cash flow. This is where we'd be very interested in knowing the profitability of an item. We'd be interested in keeping the costs down, so that we can get these positive cash flows that have been waiting for for a long time. Pestel and Porter's five forces. Uh, it it uh, Porter's five forces. For example, uh, we would be interested in uh, maybe knowing uh, our relationship with our. Uh, our customers, uh, the, the the buyer pressure. We'd be interested in measuring: uh, are they loyal to us? Is there a big churn rate, and and, and so on? Uh, we would be interested in measuring uh, items to do with our com competition. What's their cost per unit versus our cost per unit? What's their selling price versus our selling price? How many products are they bringing out a year compared to what we're bringing out a year? If we don't measure what the competition is doing, if we don't measure and keep track of uh, the behavior of our uh, customers, uh, then we can't really understand the, the five forces. Similarly with Pastel, if we don't understand uh, maybe what's happening, the population, uh, what the population prefers, uh, then we're not going to be able to understand our pastel analysis very well. Product life cycle. Ideally, we need to, to find out where in this product life cycle we are. Uh, are we in the growth phase still, or are we in the, uh, uh, the mature phase? If we're in the mature phase, we know we have to measure very carefully the cost per unit, because you know the great price pressure there and so on. Uh, if we're in the decline phase, we need to try and measure and estimate how long, how slow this decline is to judge best when to actually leave it. Company structure. If you're a divisional uh, company, uh, then typically what you'll be measuring as measures of performance would be return on investment from each of the divisions and maybe residual income from each of the divisions or maybe in a more sophisticated way, the economic value added of each of the divisions. Information technology, very important to organizations. What's the downtime? How reliable is it? How quickly do we have to wait for results uh, coming out and so on? Uh, how many visitors, or repeat visitors, do we have to our website? How many visitors to our website eventually convert into a sale? This, this is vital to our performance. Human resource management. How long do people stay with us? How much do we spend on training? Um, how, how much overtime do they do? Uh, what sort of uh, feedback are they getting from customers? Uh, we, we don't know how our people are performing, uh, which ones to emote, which ones need more, 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 more training and so on, unless we measure certain aspects of what they're doing. Uh, methods then of uh, uh, trying to construct more uh, comprehensive performance measurement systems. There's a balanced scorecard of Kaplan and Norton, a nice, simple method. Uh, and this looks at four perspectives, financial, customer, internal, business perspective, and innovations and learning perspective. And it is a hierarchy. It's basically saying that at the top here, you have the financial perspective. This is what we ultimately want to do in a profit-seeking organization. We want good earnings per share. We want good profits. Uh, we want increase in share price. We want good dividends. But as I say, nothing about these financial measures, and they're important to have them, but they don't explain why. And Kaplan and Norton say that the immediate cause of good financial performance is kind of happy customers, people who keep coming back, who are loyal, who increase their orders, who will pay you a good price for what you're doing, uh, who will spread the good word about how, what a good company you are, to, to other people who then become customers and so on. Everything rests, really. The only source of revenue is from your customers. And if it's important to keep your customers happy, you must measure how happy they are, like repeat orders, 
uh, like churn rate. How often do they, you know, they change to somebody else? That's not good news. Satisfaction ratings, sales growth, uh, referral rates. We love to know that a new customer comes along because somebody else suggested that you're a good company. Why do people keep coming to you? They keep coming to you because you do well what you say you will do well. You fulfill your mission. You fulfill the promise of the value chain. That's different for different customers or different companies. Some people come to you because you have a very low cost per unit. They're buying millions of very ordinary little components to put into something. They want a low cost per unit. Other people will come to you because of great quality. They're buying a relatively few number of components. These are maybe being incorporated into an aeroplane. They must not fail. And if that's why they come to you, you need to measure that. Maybe they come to you because you can always deliver uh, within three hours. And if that's why they love you, you must set up a performance measure for delivery time uh, and you must manage people to, to, to try and ideally get it better and better. And finally, they say, we have the innovation and learning perspective. This is saying you may be the best person, the best supplier at the moment, but there are lots of other suppliers who will be trying to get better than you. Nothing stands still. You're a competitive environment. And even though your internal business might be perfect, or as perfect as anybody else's at the moment, if you don't keep spending on getting better, uh, then you will fall behind what your competitors are doing. And once you do that, uh, then you will begin to lose customers and then you begin to lose profits. And therefore it's important that we set up measures for innovation and learning, like number of new products launched, uh, the number of new patents filed, maybe the qualifications or courses that you send your staff on, if you don't set up these measures, there's no reason why management would, would bother with this. You know, they're, they're not being told it's important. They're not being measured on it, even if they knew it was important. They could maybe try to save money by not doing that and get into the short-term, long-term trap.